Our next speaker will continue on this groundbreaking uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, our next uh, speaker is a member of the International Academy and after the Astronautics and the American Institute of Astronautics and Aeronautics. No other than the founder and CEO of Earth to Orbit, Ms. Sushmita Mohanty. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Um, I'm a spaceship designer and aerospace entrepreneur. I started my aerospace career back in the late 90s. Uh, I worked for NASA and Boeing for a couple of years. Uh, I get bored very easily, so I decided, okay, it's time to move on and start my first company, which I did in San Francisco. It was called Moonfront. Uh, we had the company for seven years, and then I started my second company out of Vienna in Austria. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary. Uh, the Vienna company, we design future systems to live in outer space. We believe that maybe in two to three generations, probably the Earth won't be very habitable anymore. So we design space habitats, rovers, spacesuits, and the likes, so that your great-grandchildren could possibly live on Moon, Mars, or maybe other planetary destinations. I moved back to India in 2008 and launched my third venture, which is called Earth to Orbit. My Indian company has satellite offices in San Francisco, in Osaka, in Japan. We sell rocket launches. We will be launching the first American satellite on an Indian rocket in the first quarter of next year. It might sound very simple, but it isn't. The United States imposed a ban on India in 98 when we conducted our nuclear tests such that none of the American companies are allowed to sell any space components to the Indian space program. And you're not allowed to launch on Indian rockets. So it took me a good five years to go through the various hoops at the State Department in, the, in DC, in Delhi, to get a waiver to override the ban. And in, in, in many ways, this is going to be a historic launch because the world is going to come full circle. Um, I'm after my trip to Stockholm, I'm headed to Marseille in the south of France because my Vienna company is working on a project where we've designed and built a complete prototype of a deployable habitat, a habitat which you can carry on a rocket, land on another planet, and deploy it. It's also a habitat which you can use in extreme environments here on Earth. It could be Antarctica, it could be the Arctic, it could be refugee zones, it could be like the recent earthquake in Nepal if you had to quickly deploy habitats. So space and Earth have a lot of reciprocities uh, in terms of design, architecture, and applications, uh, which is what I find very exciting about what I do. The Indian space program not many of us know, is as old as many of the other world's leading space programs. The first satellite, Sputnik, flew in 1957. Yuri Gagarin went to space in 1961. And India launched its first sounding rocket way back in 1963. And this rocket was literally launched out of a very small launch pad in a coconut plantation in the south of India. Uh, I love the story, the way it all began. There's a little church there called Mary Magdalene's Church where the bishop, he gave up his house to make it a workshop. The cattle shed became the lab. In fact, our former president, the, the predecessor to Mr. Pranam Mukherjee, who's currently visiting Sweden, his name is Dr. Abdul Kalam. He's a rocket scientist. We had a precedent for a rocket, I mean, a rocket scientist for a precedent. How many countries have that? Uh, he worked out of the cattle shed lab, and he is one of the pioneers. I grew up with the pioneers of the Indian space program, my dad being one of them. So I've really seen the Indian space program evolve. Last year, when India made it to Mars, the media loved us for the spectacular success. I mean, the, the spotlight was on the fact that we did it for 70 million US dollars when NASA was flying a mission to Mars around the same time for about 670 million US dollars. So the entire 
focus was on frugal engineering. But if you ask me, I think there's a lot more to a Mars mission like that than frugal engineering. You have to get your math right. You have to know your orbital mechanics to slingshot out of the Earth orbit and reinsert into a planetary orbit. That's the tough part. And we did it perfectly. We became the first country on the planet to make it to Mars on our first attempt. The other exciting thing about the Mars mission, in my view, is the fact that it used a very innovative organizational model. You know, when we think about innovation, we always think of products and services. Uh, we rarely think about innovative business models or innovative organizational models. Uh, so what the Indian Space Agency did, they built the spacecraft within 14 months, ladies and gentlemen, just 14 months, which is still a little over a year, from the day the budget was approved to the day the spacecraft flew, it was barely over a year. In, in the space world, that is absolutely spectacular. Um, a lot of people, when I travel around, ask me, why does India have a space program in the first place? Why do you invest in space? I think the answer is a no-brainer. Satellites, state-of-the-art satellites, whether it's Earth observation, telecommunications, navigation, what have you. It's not a luxury for India, it's a necessity. We are a subcontinent. I mean, what, 17% of humanity lives there? And the kind of things that we do with our satellites, it affects the lives of everyday people, fishermen, farmers, any sector that you can possibly imagine, logistics and tracking, oil and gas, urban planning, resource management, defense, homeland security, telemedicine, teleeducation. I mean, the list just goes on. So the political will and the support from the people for the Indian space program is completely unwavering. It's probably one of the only countries in the world whose budget is going up by about an average of 25 to 35 percent every year. So we have no doubt that space is important for India and it's part of our future planning. Um, I think the next step for India, if you ask my generation, so my dad's generation kick-started the space program, and my generation would like us to take it to the next, next level. We want to see the Indian space program in phases, of course, just like Europe and the United States went through it, to deregulate, privatize, and go out and compete internationally. And that's what I'm here for, and I think I love being an entrepreneur. Thank you.